If suddenly you started to shrink in size, how long would it be until you became as small as a particle of dust? Why would things look different to your eyes? And why should you stay away from these grabby things? Today, you'll be scaling down by one centimeter every second from human-sized all the way down to the size of a subatomic particle. Your shrinking adventure would begin suddenly. You'd start at an average adult size. Your mass, your voice, and your grip strength would all feel normal. Whoa, but after just 10 seconds, you drop 10 centimeters in height. That's about four inches. And the fun part is your weight would be falling faster than your muscle force, so you'd feel deceptively springy. Now, after 20 seconds, you'd be down another 10 centimeters. You'd be breathing just a little faster and shallower. That's because your lungs would start shrinking too. All of these changes would be pretty subtle, so you might not realize what was happening at first. But now, a whole minute has gone by and you've shrunk to the size of a child. Yeah, you'd be 60 centimeters or 24 inches shorter than where you started from. That you would notice. At this point, you'd have lost one third of your mass. You may feel lighter and more agile, but you'd also be losing heat fast, so even a small draft would be pretty chilly to you. As you gasp, wondering what's happening to you, you'll hear a tiny, high-pitched voice. Oh, that's you. Your voice will get higher because your vocal cords will be shrinking down with you. And so would your other organs. No! Keeping warmer would be harder, and you'd be inhaling far fewer air molecules. Metabolically, you'd be turning into a small mammal. Now, if your clothes didn't shrink at the same rate as you, which they wouldn't, they'd become a hazard. Your sleeves would swallow your hands and <laughs> your pants would fall down. Soon, you'd be running around this big room naked. But for the sake of our viewers, we're gonna keep this story PG and make your clothes shrink along with you. In just 90 seconds, you'd be less than one meter in height. That's three foot four, like a four-year-old. The furniture would tower above you. Your field of view would be so much lower that you'd see things you haven't noticed since you were a kid. After two minutes, you'd have lost 120 centimeters. That's four feet. The pitch of your voice would rise higher and you wouldn't just look like a child. You'd sound like one too. And here's a new superpower. Your ear canal resonance would shift up so you'd hear higher frequencies that you couldn't catch as an adult. Hopefully your survival instinct kicks in fast because you'd be light enough now that a moderate gust of wind could knock you over. If a house cat wandered into the room, it would look more like a tiger. It would pose a real danger. Two and a half minutes into this scenario, you'd only be 30 centimeters tall. That's one foot. At this point, you'd be the same size as a domestic cat, only you wouldn't feel as strong. The good news is, is because you shed all that weight, even jumping down from a tabletop wouldn't hurt you. Pretty soon, things will get way more interesting and you'll enter a world you've never seen before. Yeah, just over eight minutes into this journey, you'll be in a world of proteins and molecules. This is also a place where a small but powerful molecule by Gain Therapeutics works hard to restore dysfunctional proteins. Gain Therapeutics is a clinical stage biotech company and a sponsor of this video. Stick around to learn how they tackle neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's with their innovative approach. Click the link in the description to learn more about Gain Therapeutics and how they're rewriting the story of neurodegenerative disease. But for now, after 170 seconds of shrinking, you'd only be 10 centimeters tall. That's four inches, twice as big as a mouse. Insects would be scary. A cockroach would seem as large as a dog relative to you. 
and you wouldn't recognize the environment around you. Every speck of dust on the floor would be like a rock. And what looked like ordinary dust when viewed from your regular height might reveal itself as a colony of microscopic particles and tiny creatures. Okay, after three minutes of your downsizing journey, you'd be roughly one centimeter or three-eighths of an inch tall. Now, you'd be the same size as a large insect. And to anyone regular sized, you've basically become a bug. Try not to get yourself squished. At this size, grooves in the floorboards would look like trenches and carpet fibers would rise like dense bamboo. The air would feel different, almost syrupy. It's not because the air down there is different, it's because now you'd be so small that you'd feel air resistance pushing against your every step. Right about now, you'd be entering the microscopic world. This ride is about to get wild. After you passed the three minute mark, you'd be a mere one millimeter in height. That's 1 25th of an inch. You'd be the same height as a micro SD card. Now, you'd see dust mites moving like stubby spined bulldozers through the carpet forest. They'd be half your current size. And other insects would seem like giants. An ant would tower above you five times your size. You'd be so tiny and frail that even your own breath would shove you backwards. You could slip into a keyhole, disappear beneath a floorboard seam, or you know, just get inhaled like a speck of dust. Soon, you'd slip below the threshold of what your eyes can see as you're about to enter the realm of microbes and cells. Okay, you've been shrinking for four minutes and now you'd be about as tall as a strand of human hair is wide. The world wouldn't look the same to you from the height of 100 micrometers and the world wouldn't even see you, not without a microscope. Oh, look, that living jelly puddle in front of you is an amoeba. An amoeba is a tiny living organism made of just one single cell. Scientists call it a unicellular eukaryote. Now, it might just have one cell, but it's a complex cell with a nucleus and organelles. This tiny creature eats its food by hugging and absorbing it. The largest amoeba are about the same size as you are now, so watch out. Do not let it hug you. And definitely don't get too close to paramecium. These guys, just like amoebas, are single-celled, only now they'd be three times your size. Uh, paramecia are super fast, too. They can swim at two millimeters per second, which at your scale would feel astonishingly like super speed. Lucky for you, they can only live in water, so just try to avoid the water drops. I mean, that's good advice for you at this point anyway, considering your size. This microscopic world would be so new and exciting. Like that large bear looking creature? That's a tardigrade, or literally a microscopic water bear. These are awesome. Not only do they look very plump and friendly, but they're also some of the most resilient organisms on the planet. Tardigrades can survive anything like freezing temperatures, crushing pressures, and even the vacuum of space. But even though they look friendly, you better get out of their way now. Not only would you be tiny and invisible to the naked eye, but your own eyes wouldn't see things the same anymore. Right now, you'd be about the same size as the wavelength of visible light. For you, everything would look like a blurry haze and all the colors would start to fade. In this new microscopic world, you'd even walk differently. The gravity would feel weaker and you could walk up a water droplet. The capillary forces would support your tiny weight so you wouldn't fall. Yeah, walking on water is a thing when you're this tiny. Five minutes after the start of your shrinking journey, 
you'd see a forest of mold spores and fungal hyphae around you. And you'd start seeing some of the largest bacteria too. But it's time to shrink even more. After six minutes of shrinking, you'd be as small as a human cell. Those white blobs in front of you now, well, those would be your white blood cells. And the red ones, you guessed it, red blood cells. Being inside a human blood vessel would be like surfing on blood cells. Hip, watch out for those white cells, oof. Those bumpy spheres are covered with grabby arm-like receptors, ready to capture and engulf bacteria at any moment. Now, if you were on the surface of human skin, the pores would look like giant craters on an alien planet. You'd start seeing organelles inside cells. These little structures would be the size of a pumpkin back when you were regular size. At this scale, your nervous cells or neurons would look like giant trees branching axons and dendrites instead of tree branches. Once you've shrunk down to the size of half a micrometer, that's bigger than half a micrometer, you could start wandering around inside a human cell, exploring the vast crowded warehouse of organelles and the cell's nucleus. But not everything is right in this hidden cellular universe. Deep inside one of these dopamine producing neurons, a protein that was functioning normally begins to misfold. It twists into an abnormal shape, like a piece of crumpled up paper. This dysfunctional enzyme is no longer doing its job, but even worse, it's setting off a chain reaction that starts damaging other parts of the cell. Soon, the stress and toxic buildup start killing neurons altogether. What you're witnessing is one of the causes of Parkinson's disease. This kind of damage from a misfolded enzyme can lead to problems with movement, memory, and thinking. But hang in there, because as we get smaller, new possibilities appear. As you shrink down to the size of 10 nanometers, 8 minutes and 20 seconds after the start of your downsizing, you'd be in a world of molecules. Here, a small but powerful molecule binds to this faulty enzyme and corrects misfolding, restoring enzymatic activity. We're no longer talking hypothetically here. This is what GAIN Therapeutics is working on right now. GAIN is a clinical stage biotech company on a mission to tackle neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's. Their lead drug candidate, GT02287, is a small molecule designed to restore the function of dysfunctional enzymes, returning them to their correct shape and function before more neuronal damage can occur. And since it's acting at this fundamental level, it has the potential not just to ease symptoms, but to actually slow or stop disease progression. In early trials, GT02287 has shown that it can safely reach the brain, engage its target, and boost enzyme activity by more than 50%. The next step for GAIN Therapeutics is to bring this investigational therapy to people with Parkinson's in continued clinical trials, whether it's caused by a genetic mutation or age-related changes. Their research could also help fight severe conditions like Alzheimer's and Gaucher's disease. It's an innovative approach powered by their Magellan AI drug discovery platform. It uses machine learning and artificial intelligence to find new ways to fix problems scientists once thought were untouchable. Click the link in the description to learn more about Gain Therapeutics and how they're rewriting the story of neurodegenerative disease. But let's keep shrinking. Things are about to get sub-microscopic. After nine long minutes, you'd be just one, I'm not even gonna bother, one nanometer tall. That's one billionth of a meter. Now, you'd be on the same scale as small molecules and even large atoms. Here's that enzyme repairing molecule by Gain Therapeutics. And this little guy is a single molecule of carbon 
only three times smaller than you. You yourself would be just five to ten atoms in height. But you wouldn't really see anything down here with your eyes. That's because now you'd be smaller than the shortest wavelengths of visible light. But you can touch the things around you. Atoms would give you a fuzzy resistance kind of feeling. That would be the electrons creating electromagnetic forces inside an atom. The atomic nucleus, that's the core of an atom, would still be far smaller. That tiny thing is only one femtometer in diameter. Yeah, you ever heard of that measurement? I haven't. That's one one thousandth of the size that I am right now. Okay, after 10 minutes of continuous shrinking, you'd finally be the same size as an atom. This is around the time when the laws of physics get out of hand. You're now in the quantum world. The very concept of having a consistent shape or seeing in a usual way would break down. Not that you could see anything anyway. Everything around you would be vibrating. An atom next to you might suddenly swap places with another. That's called a quantum jump. Radiation at this scale is deadly for larger creatures, but to you, it's just part of the environment. A stray X-ray photon might blast through, larger than you are, maybe carrying you with it like a leaf in a hurricane. The subatomic world of protons, neutrons, and quarks is beyond tiny. At this scale, you would no longer be a separate being. You'd be part of the atomic lattice. You might even bind into a molecule. That would be the end of your journey. You yourself become a building block, an atom that makes up a molecule, a molecule that makes up something bigger, like a regular sized you. Well, things don't always have to get smaller. Maybe next time you'll grow bigger, become the size of a dinosaur. But that's a story for another What If.